Hi everybody, I'm John Dudash. I'm president of PostalMate, and with me are Karen Grant and Sarah Rody Ecker, both sales executives with uh, PostalMate and longtime members of the fraternity of store owners in the mail and parcel business. Um, you guys are virtual experts in the world of store ownership and in this industry in general. So I thought it'd be nice to have you talk to a group of prospective owners and see uh, if you could impart some of your wisdom and what you've learned along the way uh, to give them the opportunity to use that information to either make a decision to get in the business or to uh, maybe change the way they do things currently. So um, why don't we just start with uh, a brief history of the industry as you guys know it, Karen? Sure, so the industry started in the late 70s, early 80s with a shortage of mailboxes in places everybody was moving to, namely California. So a bunch of stores opened up and all they did was rent mailboxes in place of the post office. And that was fine, except now they had this big building and they had a lot of mailboxes, but what else did they do? So they started adding complementing uh, profit centers like shipping, UPS, FedEx, DHL, uh, post office services, and faxing, and then copying, and then printing. And one thing led to another, and packing, and all these different things. And they now are a full service pack and ship business center. Wow, very interesting. Well, uh, Sarah, obviously in any retail venture, in any industry, if you're going to have a brick and mortar shop, the location of that shop is important. And it varies industry to industry. But in this particular industry, in the mail and parcel store world, what does an optimal location look like and what should a prospective owner be looking for? It's a very good question because your location is one of the biggest, most important decisions you'll make. If, if I could wave a magic wand and choose the perfect location, it would have an anchor store like a, a, a very nice upscale grocery store. It would have maybe a coffee shop next door. It would have excellent parking, very important for people who are carrying big heavy boxes across the, the parking lot. It would have um, uh, an upscale neighborhood. It would be in a nice, nice area where people have disposable income to spend. Right, because uh, you want people that are shipping uh, packages where revenue gets generated on a regular basis. Right? Exactly, and a lot of our business is a luxury type of item, but there are also things like printing that our stores do that are, are needed in every community. So it really depends on what the community needs. Gotcha. Um, investment. W when we talk about opening a brand new store versus inheriting a store or having a built-in infrastructure, what sort of equipment, well even if I get a built-in infrastructure, what sort of equipment would I look for? What do I want? Karen, what, what can I expect in terms of an investment in the actual infrastructure of a business? Well, if you're really smart, you can do it really well with not too much uh, outspending. You're gonna need mailboxes because mailboxes are a fundamental part of this industry and that's expected. So you're gonna have banks of mailboxes and those can be costly. Uh, but then otherwise, the most expensive equipment you're going to have is your computer equipment. So you're going to have to have your modern computers, you're going to have to have uh, supported scales that are legal for trade and various printers and what have you. Other than that, it's just your typical standard retail supplies. You're going to have your counters, your wall fixtures, your spinners, and anything that you might would sell in your lobby. Gotcha. Well, as we, we all know, um, with the array of uh, retail opportunities out there in our industry, there's also a couple different fundamental foundations which you can operate under. Uh, you could be an independent and really manage your own business, or you can use the services of a franchise operation, of which there are many, many, many good ones in our business. Sarah, what should be, uh, without recommending one or way or the other, what are the key components of making that decision of do I stay independent or do I go franchise? I think it really depends on the type of person you are. If you're the type of person who likes to do research and get out there and find out for yourself how to do things, then it's great to go do it as an independent. But if you need a little more assistance and hand-holding and guidance and training and all of the things that come along with the franchise, the franchises are a great way to go. The other thing that you mentioned a little bit earlier were the different carriers that are available to our stores. And as an independent, you have to be careful because the carriers have, re have their own territories that they guard very carefully. And the franchises don't have the same roles as an independent does. So an independent may not be able to get some of the carriers while the uh, franchise will allow them to have all the carriers. And some of the benefits that go with that, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Well, you brought up a really interesting point uh, about training. 
uh, you know, we've progressed now where I've made the decision I want to store. I kind of know what my investment's going to look like. I've picked my location, but I've never actually run a store. What type of training do I need, Karen, and where would I get it? That's part of the beauty of being part of the Postal Mate family. There is training to be had um, uh, all over the place. We have regional trainings where we go to various parts of the country and you come to us over a weekend. We attend national conventions where you can get a ton of training. We have uh, webinars that we hold every single month for new owners and for experienced owners on hot topics that are very important to the industry. We have uh, bunches of videos that are available, many of them on YouTube, and we have tech notes and, uh, and a wonderful, amazing support staff that will hold your hand while you learn. That's great. One of the things you mentioned, Sarah, just touched on in your previous uh, answer to my question was carrier accounts. Mm -hmm. You talked a little bit about geography, but it's deeper than that, isn't it? It is. There's a lot of rules around which carrier you use, and a multi-carrier solution is something you, you almost have to have, correct? Yeah. The most successful stores, many of them, many of the most successful stores are multi-carrier. They have U.S. Postal Service, they have UPS, Federal Express, DHL, and then maybe one or two regional carriers. The nice part about having lots of choices is that your customers then have lots of choices. Right. And the carriers, if you, are, if you have an authorized shipping account with that carrier, they list you on their website. So your customers wow. can find you and come into your stores. But it's not, it's not a given that you get those authorized accounts, is it? Absolutely not. You must apply and be it with, within a, a territory that is not already saturated by that carrier. So, for example, if you were to uh, apply for UPS, FedEx, or DHL, and there were, was already another store in that territory, they will deny that if you are an independent, right. where the franchises would get that carrier account. Yeah, one of the benefits of being part of exactly, a franchise. Correct? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, okay, now I'm open my store. What can I expect? What can I expect in terms of a lifestyle? What can I expect in terms of just my day-to-day -day work life? Well, it's, um, it's a fun day. Uh, it's it's, it's t regular business hours, nine to five, eight to six, whatever it is for your community, but it is Monday through Saturday. Now, Saturday, off times a store would only be open a part day, and that's certainly your call. Only a few stores uh, choose to open on Sunday. It is all 52 weeks, all 365 days of the year except for Sundays, um, there are a handful of federal holidays that you wouldn't work. So do expect to be kept busy. But I can't stress enough how much fun it was for the many years I had my stores. Oh, that's a great point. It is a level of diversity and new experiences every day uh, really does add to the pleasure of running a business, doesn't it? It does. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you this. You guys have mentioned two or three different times about this wonderful community of store owners, whether you're in a franchise or independent, the opportunities to interact and learn from each other. How do I know that I'm gonna be that person, that I'll fit in with this group of people, who, let's be honest, who are strangers at this point in time? You've gotta be a people person. If mm -hmm. you're gonna be in this industry, you have to really enjoy working and sol problem solving and, and helping people, because that's what this industry is. We are here to help the community get the resources they need, and in a pleasant way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's, that's a really good point. If you don't like interacting with people, and uh, uh, then this would be a difficult situation, or you need to hire people who do like working Absolutely. with people. Um, Absolutely. Lastly, and the, probably the most important thing here is um, just setting up my business and being part of this community is one thing. Actually making a living at it is another. Give me some, some of your experiences you guys had when you ran your own business, what you found to be the, the secret sauce or the formula to be uh, profitable and to make it not only compelling as a lifestyle, but compelling as a way to pay the bills. Well, I can tell you that what Sarah spoke to earlier, location, 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 mm -hmm. is a big part of that. But you can absolutely make a living in this industry. Thousands of store owners do, and make a living not only for them, but their employees as well. Um, it is just a, a, it's a formula, and the closer you get to the ideal magic wand of that formula, the better that you will do in general. And it's, you know, it takes time to build any business. But I've seen businesses start making money in just a couple of months, and I've seen businesses take a couple years. How close to that formula they are? Are they in a high-end location? Did they get their, do their training? Did they do their due diligence? Are they people people? Do they like people? Um, is it friendly, warm? You know, is the, is the, when you walk into the store, do they feel good? 
this is a this is a business where you're trying to make your customers happy. Yeah, it being a destination is kind of a uh, a real benefit, isn't it? It is. Um, lastly, uh, as we're all you know members of the Postal Mate family, as you quite rightly said earlier. And the fact that we really do can, uh, you know, service 85% of the independent uh, mail and parcel store market. Um, give us just a brief uh, outlook on why uh, Postalmate software is so important when you're a, a, a prospective store owner and software in general. The software you pick is important. For sure. I have always said it like this. I, I counted my software as a silent partner. It helped me manage all of the day-to-day -day things in my store in one place. And it gave me the tools I needed to have the reports that were at hand. It gave me the tools I needed when I was ready to sell my store to be able to show somebody else who was coming in. This is a process that you can do, and it was easy to teach somebody else how to do it. Yeah, ease of operation is important, right? It's Very it's important. Huge. Because, I mean, IT's, it's, it's intimidating. Let's be honest, it can be. And the easier it is to learn something, the easier it is to learn something, uh, that makes the experience that much better. And I would argue, uh, for obvious reasons, PostalMate is that partner. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you all for listening. I hope this helped. I hope it gave you some insights as to uh, some of the key factors and decision-making uh, data points you're going to want to consider before or as you open a store. And again, if you have any questions or would like a deeper dive into this subject, please call the number at the bottom of the screen or visit the website and we will be happy to help you. Thank you all.